According to a world population status by the United Nations, it has been stated that the Republic of Uganda is the best country to live in in terms of weather, in terms of food, and in terms of the general public of how the population relates to foreigners. I'm just kidding. The important thing to note is that many people are asking and wanting to acquire citizenship with the government of Uganda and become citizens with the Republic of Uganda. In other words, in today's video, I'm here to talk to you about how to acquire citizenship as a foreigner or as a Ugandan who has been living in Uganda for the longest period of time possible. So, let's go. Welcome back to Simply Legal. Wow, a lot has been happening all over the globe and in Uganda in specific. However, that will be a whole different video that I'm going to do covering everything that has been happening in 2023 so far. However, in today's video, I'm here to discuss with you how to acquire citizenship as a foreigner or as a Ugandan who may not really be a certified citizen. In Uganda, we have different types of citizenship provided for by the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. In specific, we have four types of citizenship in Uganda. We have citizenship by birth, we have citizenship by naturalization, we have citizenship by registration, and we also have dual citizenship. Therefore, you may be asking what are the laws and provisions that handle citizenship in Uganda under the constitution. We have articles 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. I'm going to explain all of them simultaneously, and I'm also going to give you the most important ways in how you can become a citizen in Uganda. But before that, before we even go to that, a quick shout out to the people who have dressed us once again, and that's by Abby Ty Steel. Abby has provided me with this very exquisite suspender or pair of suspenders and uh, if you need any any place to shop gentlemen and even ladies who want to shop for their gentlemen for their sons for their fathers whatever it is please go to abby ties and you're able to get the best suspenders the best ties and uh, anything else that you'd want to shop concerning men's wear for formal wear for party wear and the rest now for purposes of this video and for how huge the topic of immigration and citizenship is i'm going to explain to you number one how to get citizenship by birth and what you need for that and also number two how to get citizenship by registration so therefore let's start with what citizenship by birth is article 11 of the constitution of the republic of uganda provides for citizenship by birth and who a citizen by birth is and it works in tandem it meaning it works in connection with section 12 of the Uganda Immigration and Control Act of Uganda. So basically these two these two sections and article of the law basically state that a person who is born in Uganda, even a person who is born in the airspace of Uganda, imagine if a person is flying over Uganda and that person is born on the plane, that person becomes a Ugandan citizen because they were born in Ugandan airspace. So number one, anyone who you see born in Mulago Hospital, Rubaga, regardless even if it's a home birth, someone who is born on Ugandan soil is regarded a Ugandan citizen. Just like any other country, just like the United States, states if you're born there if you're born on a plane and you're transversing around let's say oregon or michigan or in the uk or in china even if you are ugandan by origin then you are still considered a chinese citizen if you're born on chinese soil that's citizenship by birth so it's a bit more complicated than that there are a number of scenarios number one you could have been a citizen by origin meaning even if you are born in the united states Let's say you're born in a, in a United States hospital and your grandparents or your parents are Ugandans by origin. You can still apply for citizenship by birth or another category can be for uh, citizenship through registration. So I hope you can be able to get the picture. The fact that your grandparents were, let's say, Ugandans and and let's say for you are fortunate enough to have been born in another country still, you're considered a, a, a citizen by birth. However, the strongest way you can be a citizen by birth is when you're actually born here. So what is the procedure for when you can become a citizen by birth because still even even if you're you're born here still there are certain scenarios under which you can be citizen by birth for example you can be an adopted child we it's no secret that there are many different uh children and babies homes for example the most renowned is sanyo baby's home so let's say uh, a foreign couple wants to adopt a child and that child was was not really a a, a person or a citizen by birth then still that that child who is under the age of 18 can still apply for citizenship of Uganda by birth. So the only the only procedure under which that can take place is that after you've done the adoption process, for those of you who might not, for those of you who might want to be, or for those of you who might want to adopt a child who is below the age of 18. By the way, before we even go further, who is a child? Just a small digress. A, a child is a person who is below the age of 18. Now this is stipulated under Section 3 of the Children's Amendment and also in the Constitutional Republic of Uganda. A child is someone 
someone who is below the age of 18. So imagine if you are a couple from Sweden or you're a couple from the United States or China or Denmark and you want to adopt a child from Uganda. If you dig into that child's papers and you find that that child was not a Ugandan or was not born in Uganda or is not a Ugandan by origin, but for some reason they found themselves here in Uganda and you still want them to be a Ugandan citizen, you can still apply to, to, to the children's court, the high court children's division, and then you can basically apply for them to be a, a citizen by birth and you can do this by also appearing in the courts of law as this person's adopted parent so i'll dig into that later on but i wanted you to also understand how someone can still apply for citizenship by birth i know it may be a little confusing but it's a, a little technical so let us go to the other further procedures on how you can apply for citizenship so the procedure is, is quite short it's still in relation to to an adopted child or through the process of adoption so you've i think by now you've really understood that you can either when it comes to citizenship by birth you can only either have been born in uganda or you have to be an adopted child and the adoption process should be going through or should be going on in uganda so in relation to the ghana citizenship and immigration act of uganda in specific section 13 subsection 2 it states that the only way a person a child can be a, a citizen of uganda without ha without them having been born in uganda they can only do it through the adoption process i've already taken you through that meaning that the parents have to be there and the child has to be, be below the age of 18, preferably 16 and below, uh, the parents have to be there when the child is taking an oath. The child has to take an oath that now I have become a, a citizen by birth. However, I did it through a court process and that is only through the adoption process. For those of you who might not know what the adoption process is in Uganda, I talked about it in an earlier video about it. So I'm going to leave the link in the description below on how to adopt a child in Uganda. So let us now go to citizenship through registration or by registration. Let's go. So what is citizenship through registration? Like any other constitution or any other country all over the world, every country grants each new citizen or each new migrant into that country a chance to become a citizen through registration. But before we even go to that, we need to understand what registration is and w which people are categorized or which people are able to be able to sign up for citizenship under registration. So let's start with what registration is. Imagine if you are a person from China or you're from England or you're from Sweden or Spain. I know I keep mentioning the same countries over and over again, but it's because since I was a child, I've always loved those countries. However, a person who has just come into the country and you're interested in becoming a citizen through registration, that is actually the most common way in which foreigners become uh, citizens in Uganda. So you can be able to go to immigration offices and be able to an immigration offices are under Ministry of Internal Affairs. Internal Affairs in Uganda means that anything that concerns our country internally. So you go to immigration offices and there that will be a whole different process entirely. However, registration is the most important thing that you can do as a foreigner if you're not a natural born citizen in Uganda. Then there you can apply for citizenship and that's an entire process that I'm going to explain in the video later on. So which people can be able to apply for citizenship through registration. Remember I have said number one is that you are not a naturally born citizen of Uganda meaning you are not born on Ugandan soil. So number one a person who has married a Ugandan citizen meaning that you can apply for citizenship through registration if assuming that let's say I was a Ghanaian let's say I'm from Ghana and I come to Uganda I fall in love with a very beautiful Ugandan girl and I decide to marry her here in Uganda then I tell her you know what spend some time here in Uganda about three or five years why can't I become a citizen of Uganda so she will direct me to immigration offices they will take us through the entire process and they will become a citizen through registration if it passes through so that's number one number two if i voluntarily meaning if i willingly came on my own to uganda and i decided to become a ugandan citizen meaning that that's voluntary migration meaning that i've come to uganda uh, on my own will without me without me having been uh, extradited or without me being a felony a felon or a criminal meaning that i've come to uganda willingly and i've decided to stay here and i've decided to become a citizen on my own will no one has forced me out my former country didn't force me out i've decided to renounce my citizenship there meaning i've, I've told them that i'm longer citizen of the u.s i'm now a citizen of uganda and number three permanent residence what does this mean this is in relation to voluntary migration meaning that i came i traveled to uganda willingly and i've decided to become a citizen so this means that i have decided to stay in uganda for a certain period of time L let me explain it a bit more detail many people who have gone to uganda or I mean, many people who have gone to the united states of america or england or sweden they have gone and stayed there with let's say a person or children who are normally adopted here in uganda are taken to the united states now if you decide to stay there for a specific period of time let's say three five or ten years or twenty years and you 
you have already been applying for the process of citizenship, meaning that they've given you that category of permanent residence. In Uganda, we have it too, because meaning that you are going to stay in Uganda for a period of time. After that, then you can become a, a Ugandan citizen. So those are the categories of people who can apply for citizenship of registration. So if you don't if you don't fit in any of those categories, go back to your country. That was just a joke. In Uganda, we're very, very welcoming people. We're very friendly, so please come and apply for citizenship. We want diversity in our country. So let us now go to the procedure of how to apply for citizenship by registration and then we finalize this video. So the procedure for how one can become a citizen by registration. Number one, they must be able to fill out the forms which are stipulated and provided for under Ministry of Internal Affairs in specific the immigration section. Number two, this person must be able to state how long that they have been in Uganda. For example, you can't just migrate to Uganda and then after like one year you want to apply for citizenship. You must have stayed in Uganda for a specific period of time, at least a period of about 5 to 20 years, you must have really embodied how much of a Ugandan you are, even if you're from China, you're from Spain, you're from Portugal. You must really show interest that I've not just been in your country for one year and I want to apply for citizenship. You must have been there for about 5 to 20 years to show good cause that indeed I want to become a citizen of Uganda. Number three, you must be able to show proficiency in English. Maybe I'm using very, very difficult terms, but you must be able to show that you know English. Because in Uganda, for those of you who might be very new in this country or who may be watching a Ugandan video for the first time, <coughs> English is our official language in, in Uganda. However, we have our main languages like Luganda, Runyankole, but English is our official language. So in your application for citizenship by registration, you must be able to show the government of Uganda through Ministry of Internal Affairs that you are very good in English because you must be able to communicate with the different people in this country. Then after that, number four, you must be able to show the previous records of the country where you're from. Meaning that if you're from Portugal, you're from China, you're from Antarctica, you must be able to provide papers as to where you're coming from, the place of birth, the time when you were born, all of that, your birth certificate, your national ID in a different setting in a different country, your country of origin, you must be able to provide all those papers. And finally, you must be able to show whether or not you are a criminal. So in our country, unfortunately, we get many people who claim to be migrating from the USA or from UK or Spain, wherever it is, and yet they have been extradited or they have been settled from their countries for being criminals or for participating in crimes against their countries of origin terrorism, crimes, whatever the case. So you must be able to provide all those papers when you're asking Uganda to grant you citizenship through registration. I would like to give you the grounds upon which your citizenship by registration can be cancelled. Number one, if, it, if the government of Uganda finds that you have participated in crimes against Uganda or you have participated voluntarily in a country by, by which Uganda is fighting against. For example, if it's found that you are fighting with the Somali government and yet Uganda has been fighting uh, the Somali government for a while. Okay, I can't necessarily call it government but if you if it's found that you're fighting with a Somali rebel group and yet Uganda has participated in fighting against the Somalia, uh, Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda and yet you have applied for citizenship by registration, the new citizenship by registration is going to be cancelled. Number two, if it is found that you acquired your citizenship through fraud, through deceit, meaning if you deceived a uh, government of Uganda, especially in the process that they're taking you through. If it is found that you lied about why you're coming into Uganda, it is found that actually you're a criminal, and let's say you lied to the, you lied to the Republic of Uganda that you're an innocent man, you're honest, you, you've just come for visiting, and then you just fraudulently applied for citizenship, there it is cancelled. And finally, if it is found that even after applying for, for your uh, citizenship by registration, if it's found that you have applied for citizenship for another country without informing government of Uganda through through immigration offices, then your cancellation, your citizenship is going to be cancelled. So that's basically it. This whole topic of citizenship is a three-part video. Citizenship and immigration is a very big video. Uh, if I talked about it, it would have even reached 20 or, or even an hour's video. However, for you to be able to understand how to apply for your citizenship as a foreigner or even as a Ugandan to another country, stay tuned, subscribe, hit the notification bell because I'm going to do a part two on how to apply for dual citizenship as a foreigner in Uganda or as a Ugandan citizenship in another country. So, until next time, my name is truly Terry Kahuma. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned on to the upcoming videos that I'm going to do. Furthermore, please feel free to share this video so that 
the YouTube algorithm is going to keep loving Simply Legal until we, we reach greater height. Currently the channel is almost on 4,000 subscribers and the day just keeps getting better and the year just keeps getting better. 2023 is coming with a blast and until next time, I'll see you in court. Bye.